Now, we're down at Scottsdale, and I'm very, very excited. I have never had a put-in fitting before. Plus, on Monday, I did the review of the brand new lab DF3, and it's been on my mind ever since. So I've had to come down and have a fitting, but actually, not from anybody. Tom, who I used to caddy for, and you can, well, you can rip my game apart without me, really. Well, I will do, don't you worry. I know you will, don't worry. When, you play, when I play with him, he gives me, well, not, I'm gonna say... Dog abuse? That's a polite way of saying About it. your putting, anyway. Yeah. Now, this is the putter I'm using right now. It's an Odyssey AI1 Rossi, and I really like the shape. So it's gonna be interesting to see what data I am gonna get. Now, just to give us a brief overview, how are we gonna go through essentially seeing if this is any good for me, I should change, or I should bin it off and go for the DF3? So we'll just start with a selection of data from your own putter, baseline figures, then we'll work with it from there, go through the lab putters that you like, see which one suits you, and then look at the data, see if you should bin it off, whether you shouldn't. Now, actually, this is really interesting, because as I said, I've never personally had a put a fit in. So all the data we're gonna go through is new to me and will probably be new to you. So let's start off by hitting some puts to get my data. So this basically calibrates with the, so it's Sam Put Lab for anybody that has or hasn't used it. Yeah, yeah. So this will go on the shaft and this then, if we, when, once we calibrate it, so this knows exactly where the putter is in space. So once we move it left, right, it knows exactly down to the 0.1 degree of all the movement. <laughs> so There's gonna be a lot of red here, I know it. <laughs> This, whenever we're doing the measurements, this has got to go on the putter so shaft. So would we do this with this putter and with a lab golf yeah, putter as well? Yeah, okay, yeah. so we can see the difference. Yeah. And, and that's an important thing. Like, if you're going to change something, you want to change it because it's better, not just for the sake of going and getting something. This looks like it's going to be tough. I feel like under pressure, I'm not yeah. going to lie. Don't, don't feel under pressure, apart from everyone watching you. But don't feel under pressure. Just hit nut puts how you normally would. So each time we hit any puts to measure, mm -hmm. we've got to calibrate the putter to the sand put lab. Okay. So if you put the face there, if you match up those lines, they as still as possible. Ah, so the line in the middle and, yeah. okay. So on the computer, I can see exactly to the degree how square you are to the metal block, which is slap bang in the middle of the hole that we're going to be aiming at. Okay. Shaky hands here, Timus. Shaky hands. Me or you? You? All over the gaff. It's you that's got hold of the putter. So we're going to hit five puts, mm -hmm. dead straight at the hole, five in a row. Go through your normal routine, take your time. Okay, let's go. Okay. So literally, this is my normal routine out on the course. I'd la have a look at the line, have a look at the break. Um, I'm aiming this in the middle of the hole, right? Yeah, this is a dead straight put, so we just want to okay. aim in the middle of the hole, five in a row, best as you can. This is the question, what grip do I use? <laughs> oh. Right, so I've hit those five puts away. It's now time to have a look at my data. Tom's gonna get it up on the screen here. Okay, you have to talk me through this. Do you know what, I'm seeing greens. Yeah, no reds, so that's a good start. I'm seeing isn't it? one green and three amber. Are they amber, orange, yellow? Amber, we'll say. Okay, talk me through. So this is sort of an overall percentage which takes into account many different aspects of aim, tempo, delivery, all sorts of okay. things. So if we could improve the overall at the end, yeah. that means effectively we've improved your putting. So 71.6 okay. overall, like what does that like equate to in terms of like low handicap, high handicap, mid handicap? Certainly in the Thankfully for you, certainly yeah, in the go. lower end. Um, <laughs> Panic over. I think we can get you in the green across the okay. board though. So we've got three out of the four uh, orange. That's interesting because I actually held four of the five or three of the five puts there. Yeah. But actually finding a way of doing it rather than it being exactly. pretty good. So we'll delve into the data a bit, a bit, bit more and then we'll figure out where you're good, where you're not so good, okay. where we can improve. Okay. Right. So. so this box here, that's you at address. So that's how you aim the putter. Does that mean I hit it out the toe as well? Uh, it does a little bit, yeah, <laughs> or uh, address anyway. So any plus number is aiming right. Okay. Any minus number is aiming left. So I have so it 0.7 open. On, a, on average. average, yeah. So if you see the first three. They were bad. Are all right. They were 1.2, 1.25. Yeah, anyth yeah, anything naught point, anything is quite small, but anything over that is enough to miss putts. I feel like he's being polite here. I don't have to be, oh, I absolutely <laughs> do. Um, 
Let's see the consistency bar on the right hand side though. Yeah. So the 82% consistency, mm -hmm. pretty high. Yeah. So we can get that even higher, better. Yeah, yeah. But any lower, then we're uh, then we're struggling. We're not changing putt. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we've just been through a dress. Mm -hmm. So on average, we're a little bit open. Into impact, similar sort of story, isn't it? Yeah. So the first three were significantly open, we'll say. For you. Yeah, yeah. At your standard. Um, so that's something that we can improve on. This ball direction is very interesting. So that's the bottom left bit here, isn't it? Yeah, so that is effectively, where is the ball starting? If it was 0, 0 0.0 degrees, it's starting dead on line every time. So you would, wouldn't see any of these colour lines, basically? They'd like, all be on top of each other? Yeah, so each line is each put. Okay. So if we can narrow those down a bit, so you've, you've got a few right and a few left, mm -hmm. which gives you an average of 0 0.1 degrees left, but that's a little bit misleading. Yeah. Okay, because... There's quite a right. spread there to me. Yeah. We can definitely get that tighter. Yeah, and, and in a sense, what that means on the golf course is that starting tighter, let's say all in a shaded area, means you're going to make more putts. Exactly. I know I made putts on here, but that's a dead straight putt on a sort of closed environment where actually it's not perfect what happens out there. But overall, essentially, I'm seeing that in, in layman's terms, there's a lot of lines that I can all see. If you can't see them all, you're better putter. Yeah, okay. essentially, yeah. When we okay. get down to, hopefully that's where we can improve. Hopefully. Okay. <laughs> As you can see with the path into impact, it's going a little bit left. Yeah. So almost like a fade shot. You see, leaving the face open yeah. and kind of cutting across. That's how I feel a putt. I feel like I sort of stand here and sort of like shunt the putter. Yeah. I don't feel like I ever release the putter, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, that will, we'll get onto it in a bit. We'll, we'll look at the face rotation. I would imagine you've not got tons of rotation mm -hmm. through the ball, because if you did, you'd hit it way left. Oh, okay. Full of that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Um, so Could that yeah. also be why I should with pace control a little bit? Like when I do release one, it just sort of pops off and goes a lot further. 100%. Okay. It's a bit like hitting a double crossing with your yeah. seven iron, isn't it? Trying yeah, to fade yeah. it and you pull it, it goes a bit further. Okay. So then this is definitely something we can improve on, the yeah. strike location. Oh, that is high toe. So, yes. So if we could get that a bit closer to the middle. But that also ties in with the path. If you're going cutting across the ball, you're just presenting the toe yeah, yeah. to the ball. Yeah. Okay. So you've kind of got to hit it off the toe right now with okay. your path. Otherwise I'd hit it dead left. Exactly. It's rotation. So yeah, as we were saying, or as we were predicting, there's not a lot of face rotation through the ball. So these dotted lines here are 10 centimetres before and then 10 centimetres after impact. So if we can match those numbers up a bit closer, mm -hmm. can you imagine if you're a robot, the robot would ro rotate the exact same rate, wouldn't it? Yeah. Into the ball and through the ball. Yeah. Okay. But extremely high consistency 96 percent which you'd expect i'm not saying i'm an amazing player but you'd expect that from good players but it's about finding like a marginal gain here and if you can get that to 97 98 then or even 97 you're gonna probably hold a lot more puts than you think on the exactly course. if we can reduce the rate of closure while keeping the consistency high that's where you're going to gain because i'm a little bit surprised because i don't actually feel like i'm a decent putter <laughs> no you've never sort of thought yourself no. as a decent putter. You, probably, you never thought me, come on, you never thought me as a decent <laughs> no, putter. No, but these numbers suggest that <laughs> you're better than you thought, probably. Well, there we go. Right, let's go through the different models that they have on offer, and I guess what sort of level and handicap each one sort of funnels its way into, because I guess if you're buying a new putter, you want to know which one is suited to your level. I mean, I might be wrong, but Tom, talk me through the sort of different versions we've got here. We've got four in our hands here. Okay, so as you can see, this is quite different to the rest of them. Yeah. This is a called the Link One. This is more like a traditional blade putter that we, everyone's used to seeing. Mm -hmm. Even though it's got the technology, the lie angle balance of the lab putters. So all these are the same, no matter what shape, what size. Yeah, exactly. For anybody that's seen the revealer video, um, yeah, they all stay dead square to your path and you're playing. Okay. Even though they all look quite different. Now this one came out first, didn't it? The DF2. Yeah, that was the original, which is, as you can see, <laughs> pretty big footprint, isn't it? Ugly. Yeah, you could, you could say that, um, but it performs incredibly, but some people just can't get over the fact that they don't want to look down on that. Okay, well, I mean, is fair enough. I, I, I'm not going to lie, I've been eyeing up this one, the DF3. This is the latest one that's just come out, isn't it? Yeah, so that's effectively like a the new version of the DF2, a lot smaller, a lot tighter, a lot more to people's tastes with the same performance of the DF2. And then you've got this one, the Mez 1 Max. Yeah, so that's a bit more of a, a mallet, Yep. Shape putter, um, slightly smaller head. Again, same technology. Really popular with most golfers. That one. Do you know what? I'm really 
really iron up this one. So just show us this. So if people haven't seen this tech, what light angle balance means, I mean, that's where the name lab comes from, is this. So on Tom, just show us and talk us through this. So they call this the revealer. Yep. So as you can see, it's hooked in. It can twist. I'm not gonna manipulate the shaft or the head at all. So we get it in a plane position. Take it off the floor, stays exactly square. And even as we swing, so there's no manipulation of the grip going on and the club head just wants to stay square. Now any other brand or other brands would move around in that, wouldn't they? Yeah, so it would go all over the place, open and close, and you just, you're constantly fighting the torque Talk. with your hands. Now, actually you say that, like we saw the other day when I was testing it on another putter, you could see how much that was moving around, even like just lifting it off the floor, the face closed, and then you couldn't even make a stroke. And that was actually a traditional face balance putter, yeah. which most people think stays square. Yeah. But as the video showed you, yeah, it doesn't. Okay, so, like I said, I've got my eye on this one. Like, so can we start with this and let's see where we go from there? Because yes. I think, I, I like, you correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think putting, as well as you like the tech, you've got to like what you're looking down on. 100%, especially for yourself, like you've played golf all your life, you know what you like to look down on, yeah. you, you sort of, you have your tendencies. If we can fit around that and then get the performance a bit better. I on. like the idea of a blade, but I just, I just know when I play in the greens here, even in the summer, not the quickest and I'd feel like I've not got enough behind the putt. So yeah. yeah, I want to start with this one. So let's go from there. Okay, so we're going to swap this over onto the DF3 for you and we'll get some data from the new lab. So we're just getting data straight away. That's what we're going to get yeah. with this. So okay. we can do a straight comparison, five puts with yours versus five puts with this. We'll see where we're at. I'm really intrigued. Because <laughs> I, like I said before, I was quite surprised at how good the data was. So, but the, the areas for improvement there are address, not being open, path, and then also face to impact, isn't it? Seems yeah. that they're the sort of three areas where you're looking. So I think if your golf shot, I was a little bit like this, whereas hopefully I'd be a little bit more sort of arc, a little bit squarer, uh, and my face a little bit squarer to my arc. So do the same thing here, aren't yeah. we? Same calibration process. I like that T, you know. I like that T. I much prefer that T to what I have in my putter in terms of the, the lines and the lines. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that affects your alignment. Once I feel like I can aim this easier. So we're now going to pe repeat the same process. We're going to get five putts away with the DF3. Now, first impressions here, right? I actually feel like this lie angle, I get a bit more over the golf ball. Okay. That's something that I like. And I really, I mean, I mentioned this a minute ago, but that T, that little T, feels a lot easier to line up. And this grip's interesting, it's a lot different to mine. One, it's thicker, but it's sort of one of those press grips, isn't it? What is this, a two degree? It's a two degree, yeah. So you can get one, two, and three? Get one and a half, two, and three. Right, I actually quite like how this feels. Okay, so repeat the same process. I like the weight too. Yeah? Yeah. Can you adjust the weights in this? So you yeah, can you make can it heavier, get... lighter? Yeah, standard, lighter, and heavier. Yeah. And what's this one? That's standard. Okay. Here we go, first one. Because yeah. I've always thought, I mean, I got ridiculed for using this putter. Um, it was a Ben Hogan. It had a, I'm going to say like a T, I don't know what it is. It's like a Bumblebee one. I'll put it on the screen now. And it was sort of centre shafted like this. And I liked how I could get over it. Yeah. And everybody ridiculed me for using it. I was one of the people. Yeah, I know. Okay, we just moved that ball out of the way. So we don't want the ball knocking into the other one. Okay, this is putt number four. I like, do you know what I also like? I like how this is almost like an alignment aid itself. You know, this chunk here of metal yeah. off the back. I think the way they've designed it with these coming in as well, it just really narrows your focus into here. Yeah. It? I like the weight too. Feels good. Now I didn't miss a putt there. <laughs> Apart from obviously two were a little bit short, they were all literally in the middle of the cup. Okay, let's have a look. Now, I've never ever actually had a put and fit in before in my life. I just sort of pick them up and, which probably most people do, just pick them up and see which one, like, can see which one goes in the most yeah. on a putting green. So, this looks like to me, we've got higher consistency. Like, looking at these numbers here, we start at 66 on the left tendency. It's now 67. Timing's gone from 62 to 68. Consistency's gone up from 78 to 80. And overall, it's gone up from 71 to 74. 
Yeah, so marginal gains, which yeah. as you're a good player, marginal gains really matter, don't they? Yeah, well, I mean, that's, that's all I would sort of expect, really. Yeah, as, as soon as like, especially, sorry, especially that's the first sort of putts with a lab putter. Yeah. It's a really good start, those. Right, talk me through these. I found these really interesting. Okay, so on the left is your own putter. Okay, the so right. the Odyssey that I had at the start, what I'm yep. gaming right now. The one on the right is the DF3. So similar consistency in terms of face aim, yep. just a little bit closer to neutral. Yeah. And that, I think that goes down to, as soon as you got the putter, you said, oh, I like the alignment of this. Yeah. So that I, I think like I mentioned, when you were sort of saying that like, sort of focuses you in, that, that, that sort of the angle of the sort of rounded back into the front, I feel, and especially with the sight line, I know you can customize these pretty much any way. Yeah. I think it just feels like it's much easier to aim. Plus, I feel like I'm closer to the ball as well. Yeah, so that all those factors have contributed to, to your aiming the putter yeah. better, which is the Absolutely aim. ideal. Yeah. <laughs> so if we go into impact, so the consistency of your face at impact has increased, yeah. which we'd expect because there's less torque in the face, so the face is going to match up to your path a bit more. So it's gone from 55% direction, yeah. consistency, now up to 86. Yeah. That's exactly. a big jump. <laughs> it, it really is. And uh, in correlation with that, your path at impact has gone slightly less left. So from 2.7 to 2.3. Effectively, you're not having to manipulate it quite as okay. much. Okay. This is all good. Yeah. And as you can see at the bottom with the ball direction, like we were saying before, the tighter together we can get those lines, which is each put the better. Yeah, I mean, before I had one that was outside the, the grey shaded area in the white. These are all within the grey shaded area and actually a couple on top of each other right on zero, zero. Yeah, so we're really narrow, starting to narrow that in a little bit, aren't we? Yeah. I think also like, I mean, as good as much as data is really important, I just feel better with this. I don't know what it is. It's... I think the alignment, the lie angle, the, the, the feeling of it when you look down just really suits me. As putting's a big confidence sort of yeah. game, isn't it? So if you feel really confident, you're gonna probably make a better stroke. Yeah. And if you have better data that backs it up, you're gonna make more putts, aren't you? Now, that's, I'm just laughing at those toe shots before. <laughs> oh my days. So that is a bit of a theme with you, isn't it? Oh. Off the toe. However, we've brought the strike location a little bit more towards the center. From 8.5 to 6.8. Yeah. Okay. But also, your putter versus the lab putter the lab's going to be way more consistent off the face. So even if you did have the miss hits like you did with your previous putter, the ball speed off the face is going to remain very similar. So, not, so essentially your pace control will be a bit more consistent. I like the sound of that. Yes. <laughs> There's also probably things that I do in my putting shows you're looking at going, oh. Okay, so talk me through this. So the bit that we were saying before, uh, on your left side of the screen here, you can see face closing 1.7 to 0.9, now to 1.4, to 0 0.6, so just explain what that means in terms of like layman's terms and like really simple, why is it better? Effectively, the rate of closure through the ball is less. Okay. If we had a really high rate of closure, we've really got a time. So that's that, isn't it? Yeah, so if those numbers were a lot higher, we'd have to time it a lot more to get it square, bang on impact. Yeah, yeah. Whereas if those numbers are quite low, which they are, you're gonna keep the face a lot squarer. Cool. Yeah, so it moves, as you can see, the lie moves up and down, so we can get the lie bang onto your specifications, and also the length goes up and down. So if we get you into a natural position. Yeah, so just with yeah. a put in my hand or no I'll put take that. Okay, this is where I get all the jokes that I'm really small. <laughs> Before you even you say like that, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what, I might be all right with that. So we've got the putter flush on the floor. Yeah. Okay. So I just then take this to a... Take that, that can go up and down. You just go to wherever you feel comfortable. I feel that's probably about right. You ready? Yeah. Okay, we'll just tighten that. I feel it's about 31, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> what that. is that? So it says 33 inches, yes. okay? Which is pretty much what we were saying. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we've just tightened this little thing here, and then Tom's used this measuring device to give me my lie angle. So we've got length, we've got lie angle. So 69 degrees lie yeah. angle, which is good, because that's standard for lab. Okay. Handy for you, which is exactly the Fly angle of the DF3 that you've just been testing. Nice. Well, I, that, I'm going to say, like, when I was trying that, I enjoyed how that sat to the ground. I didn't feel like I was fighting it. Yeah. And I really like that sight line. But one thing that's really cool, you can customize this. So we're going to go through the colors, have a look at what we can do, and choose the grip. And by the way, do you think that grip's good for me? Because you can, we can go different press grips, as we mentioned. We can go different press grips. That Your launch conditions are pretty suited to the number two grip. 
which okay. I think also suits you because you said you like the feel of it as well. I like the feel and the, and the thickness of that one as well. Yeah, which is a big thing in putting, isn't it? You, yeah. You've got to be comfortable, haven't you? Like, I mean, it's weird because I picked that one up originally, my original putter, and I was like, oh, that feels all right, that. But actually, that sort of sits in my left hand a lot nicer. Yeah, so I would stick with the number two grip. Okay. Um, and then we'll go through the optimization. I actually can't believe how many things we've got. Hand, putting, putter colour, we've got shaft selection. It's quite cool how many things you can do on it. Head cover. Ooh. Even down to the head cover, yeah. You can, uh, you can do... <laughs> this is a bit exciting. Probably the most customization you can do on any putter on the market, you probably have to say. Right. Okay, so what colours? So go black, Yeah. which is the standard. I can't do that, can I? Oh, I can't. Mm. I mean, I'm a blue. City fan, but I can't go that blue. That's better red. No, 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 we've got to go with that. One that's called cappuccino. No. Very much personal. We're going to go cappuccino. I just think it looked nice when I'm looking down on that. Okay. And by the way, as I'm going through this, let us know in the comments what you would spec yours up to. Um, so now I'm going to look at shafts. Um, I've heard a lot about this aqua shaft. I'd like it to look white. I think the cappuccino with the white would look really cool. Okay. We'll stick with that. Now shaft length. Shaft. So then you just put in specifications that we've just gone through here. Exactly. Yes. Okay. So 33 inch shaft, lie angle. Settled on 69 degrees. Yeah. Yeah, that one that I used was absolutely spot on and it matched. Yeah. Now grip. Okay. Now I think a white grip. It, so this is where it gets really interesting. Yeah. Now I'm a very much person. So going back to those lines that I had on mine, I didn't like how I didn't have like a T cross section. So in terms of that, can we just look at the, I mean, how many have we got here? We've got 33 different alignment marks and you can actually combine them all together as well. So say you like, uh, the big T with the line at the back, you can combine that. So okay. there's, there's endless options. Okay. So then can, you, could I, I mean, just throw a the works, get the line there, but with the T? Yes. I think I'm settled. Okay. Yeah. So the next choice. Because I think that just adds a little bit more. You still got that narrow focus, but for me, that struggles with alignment. That's really going to help. Yeah. So head weight, you were trying the standard with, that felt heavy enough. Yeah, you really like that. Didn't yeah. It? Suited your temper of your stroke, so we'll stick with standard. Head just, cover just is a really nice black, black and color. blue. Yeah, yeah, black and blue. Black, keep it black out of the way. Um, so yeah, that's the end of the. Cool. Can I see that? Can I see the whole putter there? So this is pretty much the cappuccino head with the white shaft, but that would be a white grip, is what yes. I've gone for. So essentially, that's kind of what it'll look like color wise. Yeah. Not not that model. We're going for the DF3. But that colour, I mean, that's pure, isn't it? And then that's the head cover, right? Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? Very nice. I'm very, very excited to get this putt. I'm actually excited to just test it for more than like five or six putts just here on the putting green. It's official. The Odyssey is getting binned. As soon as this putter arrives, I'm going to be using my brand new DF3.